If you enjoy this video, please consider giving a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you have any ideas for future videos, share them in the comments section below. This original bedtime story is made possible thanks to Slumberland patrons. If you would like to support this channel, you can find Patreon details in the description and on my channel homepage. So just take a moment to allow your eyes to close and allow yourself to begin to relax. And as you begin to comfortably drift asleep, I don't know whether you'll fall asleep faster to the sound of my voice or whether it'll be to the spaces between my words. And as you comfortably drift asleep, I'm just going to tell this sleep story in the background. And this is a sleep story about Faye the chipmunk. And Faye is a chipmunk who lives in a pine forest in the top of a giant sequoia tree. And it's a very unusual place for them to live but they've made this their home. And high up here in the top of the forest, they have their own tree house. And they've got bridges built from their house out into the rest of the pine forest. and in other locations throughout the pine forest are other tree houses where different animals live. In a tree house, a few trees down, is a family of squirrels. A tree house, a few trees over, is a wise old owl. A tree house in another direction, a little way away, lives a cuckoo. And all these animals in these tree houses interact, meet up, and get on together. And they watch over this pine forest to ensure the well-being of the pine forest, travelling along their bridges between one tree and another. And from time to time, they see humans walk into this pine forest, sometimes alone, sometimes in couples, sometimes as a group, and sometimes with dogs, and they come to this forest for different reasons. And while humans walk in the forest and roam around the forest floor, so the animals just watch on from the tops of the trees, just observing those humans as they come in, roam around, and then leave. And Faye, the chipmunk, watches with curiosity as one specific human comes into the forest. And this human makes regular trips to the forest. She comes into the forest. She's often whistling so happily while walking through the forest. Sometimes, She's with her mum. Sometimes she's on her own. And Faye assumes that she must live nearby. And when she comes into the forest, she seems to walk through the forest. To the stream that passes down through the forest. And she'll frequently bathe in the stream. She'll go for a swim in the stream. She'll be laughing and 
seeming to enjoy the experience. And Faye refers to this person as water lily because she seems to enjoy being in the water so much. And when she's not playing in the water, she'll be sat on the bank of the stream where just the slightest sunlight manages to dapple down onto her resting on the bank of the stream there with the sound of the water flowing by. And she'll be talking about different topics. She'll be drifting off in her mind, philosophizing about different things, asking incredibly difficult questions that Faye had never even considered until she heard Lily talking about those topics. And one day, while Lily was resting by the stream, she was talking to her mum, asking about space, apparently somewhere outside the forest, up in space. There was currently a comet visible at certain time of the night. And Lily was talking about looking at that comet through her telescope. And being fascinated by its two tails. And she was talking to her mum about whether it would be possible one day to travel out into space. For just an ordinary person to be able to get into a spaceship, fly into space, enjoy being in space, not being in space to do a job, but to enjoy being in space maybe even travelling to the moon, going on holiday to a hotel on the moon, perhaps even a hotel on Mars. And the mum wouldn't say much in reply, just a few noises or words to facilitate Lily being more absorbed in her thoughts and what she's got to say. And this had Faye wondering what this life of these humans is like. She'd only ever seen humans in the forest. She didn't know what the life of the humans was like outside of the forest. From her tree towering above the forest, she had seen the stars, and she knows that many of the other animals had lived within the trees of the forest, had never been able to get above the forest to see the stars. And she'd always thought that they were beautiful, like diamonds twinkling and hanging in the air. And she'd always been curious about the bright light of the moon. But she had never thought about the idea that these could be places that someone or something could visit. And yet this human was talking as if it is at least a possibility. And one day Lily was sitting, talking to somebody by the stream, 
about sand dunes, and how they were like giant waves across deserts, and that they very gradually crept and moved. And Faye struggled to even grasp the concept of what a sand dune must be. She'd only ever seen the forest. And another day, while Lily was talking about space travel, which seemed to be one of her favourite topics of conversation, she was talking about something called a black hole. And Faye thought to herself, isn't a black hole just a hole that doesn't have light in it? And thought she knows some of those in the trees and in the forest. Sometimes you get a black hole that's dug by a fox or a rabbit or some other animals that burrow. But as Lily continued talking, Faye realised that that isn't the type of black hole that was being talked about, and Faye was realising that Lily wasn't even talking about entering the black hole, but was saying the most bizarre things that Lily was saying that if you travelled near a black hole, every day that passes for you would be like years passing for all your friends back home on Earth. And Lily was asking, about what that would mean if it was ever possible to travel to a black hole, or if a black hole ever came near to the Earth, even if it's an incredibly small black hole. What would happen if a small black hole was discovered in reach of spaceships from the Earth? And you sent something out to go near to that black hole and return to the spaceship, what would it see? What would it experience? How would the experience of the probe you send near to the black hole be compared to the spaceship that's keeping away from the black hole? And could you send a probe that was tethered to the spaceship. So that at one end it was near the black hole. And a permanent signal was sent along a wire to the ship that it's tethered to. What would be the signal received on that ship? Would it seem like the video feed of what's being observed at the other end seems to slow down. Or would it seem to run at normal speed? What would it look like on the monitor if you're watching the monitor in real time? And these were the kind of questions that Lily had. And often those who she came to the stream with didn't seem to have an answer, but seemed fascinated to listen and to encourage Lily to talk. And one night, there was a large storm that struck the forest. 
and most of the pine trees were perfectly fine. Most of the structures managed to stay attached to the trees. But many of the bridges between the structures were damaged from the swaying trees. And there was damage to Faye's home high up in that sequoia tree. And so Faye worked on fixing up her home and repairing her home from the storm damage. And while she was repairing the home from her storm damage, she heard Lily arrive at the forest. She heard Lily whistling as she walked through the forest. And she saw that Lily was looking at the damage in the forest and was commenting on how the trees, being flexible in the breeze, seemed to manage to weather the storm well. And then Lily went over to the stream, swam in the stream as she frequently did, before resting beside the stream. And Faye took a break from repairing her home, climbed down the tree, and carefully and tentatively scurried along the floor, approaching Lily. And as she approached Lily, so Lily noticed this chimpmunk moving towards her. And she froze and was very still, as if to try not to scare this chipmunk away. And Faye tentatively moved closer and closer, until they were next to each other. And then Faye said hello to Lily, and Lily just heard a squeak. And the owl looked on from up in the tree, and the squirrel family looked on, curious what was going to happen. And Faye spoke again, and it just sounded like a squeak. Then Faye and Lily heard a sound coming from the stream that sounded like the faintest, softest, most gentle twinkling bells. And then a fairy seemed to rise up from the water. And Lily gasped slightly at this sight. And to Faye, this wasn't an entirely unusual sight. There are many fairies who live in the forest. And the fairy came over and approached Lily and said to Lily, I can grant you a gift that will last until the sun begins to set. And the fairy waved their wand over Lily's head, and sparkling light danced around Lily's head, And then the light cleared, and the fairy disappeared. And Lily wondered, it didn't seem like anything was different. 
She just had a very weird experience. She didn't know that fairies were real until she just saw one in front of her. And Faye says that it's okay, that was just a fairy. And then Lily jumps again and says, I, I can understand you. You can talk. And Faye says, of course I can talk. And Lily's surprised that she can understand this chipmunk. And Faye says that the fairy has obviously just granted you a wish to be able to understand me. That us animals of the forest can understand you humans. But when you hear us talk, you don't seem to understand us in return. And Faye says that I live up in the giant sequoia tree and my house was damaged in the storm. And I'm repairing my home. But I took a break from repairing my home to come and talk with you I see you come in the forest regularly, and you come to the stream regularly, and you swim in the stream. And you tell all these tales of different things that humans seem to do, and have all these dreams of things that you'd like humans to be able to do in the future. And you talk about things that get my brain working and thinking, that I end up curious about, that I didn't even know were possible to wonder about. And Faye goes on to share her wonder for space, her wonder about black holes about hotels on the moon and Mars. And she asks about sand dunes to try and learn more about what a sand dune is. And the two of them talk through till sunset. And as the sun begins to set, so Lily notices that every now and then she can't understand certain words that Faye says. That she'll understand a couple of words, and then she'll hear some squeaking, and then she'll understand a couple more words. She realises that as the sun sets, she's not going to understand what Faye says. So she says to Faye, why don't you climb in my bag? I'll take you back to mine, just for the night. I can bring you back here in the morning. I won't understand you but I know you'll understand me. And I can show you things. And show you what my world is like. And if you would like that, just climb into my backpack. And Lily packs all her things away, while the sun has set over the horizon now and the sky is just gently illuminated with the red afterglow of the setting sun. And Lily carries Faye in her backpack out of the forest. She heads home 
walking down a road, walking past some fields, walking to a nearby house, and the whole time Faye is looking out through a gap in the bag watching the fields bobbing past, enjoying this view she's never seen before, and Faye arrives at her home, heads up to her room, places her bag down on the floor, opens her bag. She says, I'll be back in a little bit, I've just got to go and have dinner. And she goes and disappears out of her room, heads downstairs, and Faye can hear talking downstairs between Lily and her parents, and the chinking of cutlery and plates, but Faye can't work out what those sounds are. And then, Lily arrives back at her room, and she lifts Faye up, puts Faye on a desk, and she puts what looks like a flat piece of bark, but dark and smooth, on top of the desk. And then she opens this thing up. And as soon as it's opened up, the inside of it at the top lights up brightly. And Lily puts her finger on a circle. And there are lots of rectangular marks sticking out on the bottom. And as she puts her finger on a circle, so the light changes to something else. And Lily says, this is a computer. It's called a laptop. These are buttons that you press. And that one recognises my fingerprint. And that bright light is a screen It's like a window to whatever I search for. I can make it show lots of different things. And Lily tries her best to explain to this chipmunk, to explain to Faye what a laptop is, knowing that Faye can't respond. And so she doesn't know how much is understood or not. And she shows Faye some videos of space, close-ups of planets. She shows animated videos and explains that they're animations of what is thought to occur. She shows a video of an animation of a black hole while she talks about going near to black holes. She shows a video of a desert and time lapse of sand dunes moving across the desert. She shows videos from a drone flying over the forest, saying that's where you live, that's what it looks like from above, that's what it looks like around the forest when you get up very high, looking at where that forest is in relation to other places, and that's the house I live in. And Faye is just awestruck watching this screen, taking it all in, learning.
Hilton Fay shows some footage of the northern lights, of snow, of the ocean, of sea creatures. Shows what a telescope is, and how the telescope makes the things in space look nearer and says that you can get something called a microscope that does a similar job but makes little things look bigger. And she gets a digital microscope from her shelf, plugs it into the computer, cuts an incredibly fine slice of apple and looks at that under the microscope and says what you can see on the screen is the individual cells of that apple. And that night Faye spends the night in the room as Lily goes to bed and drifts comfortably asleep. And Faye doesn't sleep much during the night. She stands on the windowsill, looking out of the window at the night sky from here, and listening to the surroundings. She thinks about all she's seen, and this other world that she isn't a part of, that's beyond the forest. And she knows that she can never live in that world. But is fascinated by that world. And the next day, when Lily wakes up, she heads downstairs, she has some breakfast. She brings some of her breakfast up for Fay before heading off to the pine forest with Fay. And she goes back to the stream, to that same location she visits every day. And she sits by the stream with Fay, and she says, I wish, I wish that the fairy made it so that I could always understand what you say, that I could understand what all the animals in the forest say, and come and visit, and talk with you, and interact with you. And Faye squeaks that she would like the same thing. And Lily doesn't understand what Faye has said, but just smiles, thinking it probably was that she would like the same kind of thing. And just then, sparkling rises from the stream again. The fairy comes over to Lily and says that you've proven yourself to be someone who should be able to communicate with the animals of the forest, to have a relationship and a connection to the animals in this forest. And that there is a future that you don't yet know, but the path is already mapped out for you, where your ability to communicate with the animals is going to help you and those animals, and many more animals that you're yet to meet. 
and the fairy waves her wand. Sparkling, twinkling light descends around Lily. And as the sparkling, twinkling clears, the fairy's gone, and Lily can hear talking all around her. She can hear the owl saying, I wonder if it's work this time. Wonder if she can understand Fay now. She can hear one of the squirrels saying, don't go too close to the human just yet. She seems like she's okay. But we don't know yet. Just watch from up here. Faye's okay down there. And she realises she can understand these animals talking in the forest. And Faye begins to talk. And Lily understands her. And Lily says that she's going to come back regularly. She'll share her knowledge with those in the forest. She'll see how she can help those in the forest when they need help. And she looks forward to discovering what her role in the future is with an ability to talk to animals and how what the fairy says will apply. And other animals, now that she can communicate back and forth, are more trusting and fly down to her and crawl down to her and over to her, and tentatively engage in conversation with her, getting to know her, And Lily talks with the animals for the rest of the day. Learning their stories and sharing her own. From the strange world she inhabits outside the forest. And at the end of the day she heads home. Looking forward to her next trip to the forest. She heads to bed at the end of the night, relaxes down in her bed and drifts and floats so peacefully, so comfortably asleep, looking forward to awakening in the morning, feeling so refreshed and revitalized and full of energy and ready to get on with the day as she drifts and floats into her dreams dreaming deeper and deeper asleep all night long. <laughs>